I was just suggesting that we all do the floss in between speakers as well to get a little bit more physical activity in. Um, thank you all so much, um, and thank you very much for, for the invitation to come. This is my first obesity workshop, um, and I'm just feeling very energized this morning. I think I get invited to a lot of these workshops to describe problems. Um, I'm kind of the, the problem person, um, always talking about trends in global obesity, and I think everyone in this room knows that the problem is that um, global obesity is increasing, um, all regions of the world, which I'll show some data on uh, in a little bit. But I think I'm mostly energized to, about the later sessions, about talking about solutions, um, both here in the US and globally. So thank you so much uh, for the invitation to come. Uh, so I will start out by looking at some global trends in BMI, as well as in obesity. I'm going to uh, describe some of the contrasts that we're seeing between adults and children around the world. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about geographic differences. Much of my work, um, as you can tell by my um, visiting professor uh, position at Public Health Foundation of India, much of my work is in South Asia, uh, specifically in India, Nepal, and Bangladesh, um, with some work in, in China. So I'm going to talk about geographic differences uh, with some focus on um, Asia, but Professor um, Malik will talk a little bit more about that in the next session as well. And then I'll talk about SES differences, um, socioeconomic status differences, uh, thinking about disparities in obesity globally. And then I'll close with a couple of uh, recent updates on consequences of an unabated obesity epidemic. So in this figure, um, I, I pulled some data on trends from the NCD risk group um, offline, which is a great, uh, they have some great tools for data visualization if you're interested in looking at trends either globally, globally or within specific uh, countries over time. And so they've modeled estimates uh, based on measured uh, height and weight data from 1975 up till, I think actually they have some 2016 data in there now. Uh, and what you can see in this figure is just that you know, globally and also in contrast, um, so the US are the pink and purple lines on the top and then the global uh, mean BMI on the bottom. And you can see globally uh, huge increases in BMI in both men and women with no sign of any substantial plateau, let alone a decrease. And so I think that this is, um, you know, these trends in BMI are really why when the WHO set a target for uh, overweight and obesity, it wasn't to see some sort of decline. So when we think about NCDs, for example, non-communicable disease, they wanted to see a 25% reduction in premature mortality from NCDs. But for obesity, it was just halting the increase. Um, they didn't even want to set a target for decreasing because the, you know, the realistic target was just halting that increase and having some sort of plateau um, anywhere in the world in terms of obesity, which we'll see uh, has not been witnessed to date. When we look at the trends in adults versus in kids, which is shown here uh, from the same NCD risk group, uh, the top line, the dotted line, is the trend for BMI in adults. And then the bottom line, that solid line with the arrow, is the trend in adolescents and in children. And so what I wanted to point out here is that the trend in BMI is not as steep in kids. And so there's some sort of um, what some are calling a lag in terms of the prevalence of overweight and obesity among children and adolescents, but it's still increasing. <laughs> Um, and there are only a handful of countries, and even within those countries, specific socio-demographic groups where we're seeing a plateau or a decline in kids. So really, globally, uh, when we look at kids, there's a steady increase in BMI. But there are a lot of regional differences, as I mentioned uh, at the very beginning. So in the region where much of my work is based in Asia, uh, I've highlighted with these squares, um, South Asia and East Asia. Um, East Asia, not including high income Asia Pacific countries such as Japan, South Korea, um, where we see a plateau in overweight and obesity prevalence among adult uh, females and also um, uh, girls. But in South Asia and East Asia, we're seeing a, a big increase, and especially among um, children. And in South, so South Asia is the one on the left, and then East Asia, the one on the right. 
And when we look at males, we see similar things with steady increases across all of these Asian regions in both adult men and boys uh, in terms of BMI. So given these increasing trends in BMI, it's not surprising that when we actually look at you know, this binary indicator of obesity that's based on BMI, uh, we see huge increases in the prevalence of obesity globally. So here I'm showing the, the prevalence uh, in 1975, and then the most recent estimates for prevalence, either 2014 for uh, girls and boys or 2016 for men and women. And you can see there's a huge increase across the board. It's about a two percentage point per decade increase in the prevalence of obesity globally. Uh, and I think it's just interesting to note that in 1975, when we have these first estimates of obesity, there weren't any countries except for Russia, actually, that had a prevalence over 5%. And now, if you look at the most populous countries in the world, um, it's about half of the most populous countries that have a prevalence over 20%. So in that 40, uh, four decade period, we've seen a really um, quite remarkable increase in the prevalence of obesity, and it's across almost all countries and, and certainly all regions of the world. Uh, so this, these maps uh, from those papers uh, highlight one point that I wanted to make, which is that um, many of these, the boxes that you see here, are uh, Pacific Islands. And they're highlighted outside uh, um, in this uh, figure because the prevalence of obesity in these Pacific Island countries is certainly the highest in the world. And it's not only that it started out quite high, but the increase in the prevalence of obesity in, these, in this region has also been quite substantial, uh, especially relative to those high-income East Asian countries that I mentioned previously, uh, where we've seen a, a relatively low uh, prevalence of overweight in obesity. It's been about you know, 5% or hovering around 5% for the prevalence in South Korea and Japan versus you know, upwards of 60% in some of these Pacific Island countries. Um, and the trends for men and women are quite similar. Again, seeing very high prevalence of overweight and obesity in these Pacific Island countries. However, um, relative to this previous figure, if you take a look at um, Sub-Saharan Africa, you can see that the prevalence among women is much higher than the prevalence among men. Um, oops, looking for the laser, yeah. Um, much higher prevalence in Sub-Saharan Africa, Africa among women as compared to men. Um, and this is a pretty consistent trend where we see that countries with a, a lower GDP tend to have a higher prevalence among women than men, and then that um, tends to switch, and women and men approach each other in terms of prevalence of obesity as GDP goes up. Um, I'm just going to skip through these pretty quickly. These are the same maps for boys and for girls, um, and you can see that the, the prevalence is lower than when we looked at adults, but still quite high, including in those um, Pacific Island countries. So uh, Dr. Nugent will be talking quite a bit, I think, about the dual burden later on in this session, but I do want to highlight these figures briefly. Uh, and what I, what I want the take home message from these, the green uh, is normal, normal weight BMI, um, and then this tan, orange, and red are BMIs that are above um, 25, 30, or 35. And I think what is really interesting about these figures from 2016 is that we see in, uh, globally that the proportion in this high BMI category has now surpassed the proportion in the underweight BMI category. And so for the first time really in, in global history, when we look at um, BMI trends, we're seeing that this uh, proportion is indeed much higher than the underweight. So we're seeing that um, so-called overnutrition is surpassing undernutrition on the global scale among adults. Uh, and you can see in some, some regions of the world, um, so these are the Pacific Island countries, for example, uh, the proportion in that high BMI category also surpasses the proportion in the normal BMI category. Um, same figure for men. So again, um, seeing that the, the prevalence among 
this high BMI category is higher than among the low BMI category. When we look at kids, that has not happened yet. Um, undernutrition among kids is still more prevalent um, than o overnutrition or, or high BMI. Uh, but this trend, if, if you take the projections from 2000 onwards, if the trend continues, then by 2022, this will indeed surpass the proportion of undernourished children globally. Um, and again, same trends for boys. So briefly, when we think about the um, trends of BMI according to GDP, to try and get some hint of what the underlying drivers of high BMI globally are, um, I think it's really, this is a, a great figure that kind of captures this interaction between the national economy or GDP versus uh, an individual level measure of socioeconomic status such as education. Um, so what you can see is this uh, dotted line is education uh, in the highest, uh, highest level of education. Uh, and then on the x-axis is GDP. So these are very wealthy countries and individuals with high education versus individuals with lower education. And what's interesting is that if you have, if an individual has uh, in this marker of higher SES, really across country development status, across GDP, you see that their prevalence of um, their BMI is, is indeed higher. Um, so even in countries with a low GDP, if you have high individual socioeconomic status, you have a higher risk of overweight and obesity. Um, so I think that this really gets at the um, issue of uh, sub-national differences in the prevalence of overweight and obesity, and realizing these disparities are not only across countries, but also within countries, which we've known for a long time here in the US. Um, when we look at global, or when we look at within country differences in urban versus rural, uh, the main takeaway take from this slide is that this, uh, these blue bars are the annualized increase in overweight and obesity among women according to all different regions of the world. So for example, uh, South, South Asia. Uh, and what you can see here is that in both rural and urban areas across the board, increases in overweight and obesity among women. And what's interesting is that in many of these regions, the increases are actually greater in rural areas compared to urban areas. And so while in the past we've seen that cities tend to have a higher prevalence of overweight and obesity, especially in the low and middle income countries where I've been working, uh, over time, we're actually seeing much bigger increases in rural areas. And so rural areas are quickly cut, catching up to their urban counterparts. Um, I'm going to skip through these, but really all I wanted to show, um, and I'm actually going to jump right to some recent work that we've done in India, is that there are national averages, and increasingly we're getting more localized um, numbers of overweight and obesity. So this is the prevalence of obesity in India that we've been able to estimate at the state level. And so if you look at India as a country, it actually has an extremely low um, prevalence of obesity. But if you look within each of the states, you can see that there's a huge amount of variation, much more variation within India than what we see actually within the US with some states in southern India having a higher prevalence of obesity than many states in the US. And so there's a huge amount of variability within large countries like India. We see the same thing when we look at subnational estimates for China, for Nigeria, um, and of course with the US. And so I think uh, one of the things that we're driving for, and I think that this group has talked about in the past, is more local data. Um, because not all states in India have an overweight and obesity problem yet. And there are really um, some key states that policy should be targeting. Uh, so just two more slides. Um, I, I just wanted to quickly highlight uh, some of the recent estimates that have come out in The Lancet on the consequences of this global obesity epidemic. Uh, so the arrow here, uh, which is quite difficult to see, um, is the, the dailies that are attributable. So disability adjusted life years attributable to a high BMI. And what you can see uh, in the global, both in global estimates and in high income country estimates, um, high BMI is definitely among the top risk factors that's contributing to disability adjusted life years. Uh, and that, that number is, is ever increasing.
Um, and then finally, a, an article that came out about a month ago that was looking specifically at uh, European, several European cohorts and the loss of disease for years, um, which I think is a, a really useful indicator when we think about overweight and obesity, um, particularly globally uh, in the context of low and middle income countries. And what this is just basically the estimate relative to maintaining a, a normal weight BMI, um, the estimated loss of disease for years um, from multiple diseases, not just cardiovascular and cardiometabolic disease, but also cancer, asthma, COPD. It was a very comprehensive analysis. Um, and, and what they found was that uh, the two classes of obesity that they looked at uh, were significantly different compared to normal weight with you know, up three to um, eight and a half years of disease-free uh, years loss. Lost. Uh, and then the final slide, um, the outcome that I've mostly studied, especially in Asia, is diabetes. And we've seen really a, a very remarkable increase in the diabetes mortality, uh, which is directly linked with the increase in BMI that we're seeing in these countries. So if you look at diabetes um, here, it's actually had the largest increase uh, the largest relative increase in mortality of any of the diseases that the global burden of disease is studying. So really, uh, this is a, a signal that uh, if we don't address this high BMI epidemic, we're going to see an increase in diabetes. And the health systems that we have been working with have no capacity to take on uh, this high, high burden of, of diabetes. So I think prevention of this gain and, and kind of attenuating the gain in BMI and obesity is really a, a critical issue. So in summary, uh, just want to bring up these points again, that um, there, there's a very large population of um, children and adults who are experiencing overweight and obesity. Um, it's increasing in every region of the world. We do not have regions that it's um, decreasing in. And uh, the greatest increase, specifically among children and adolescents, has been in East Asia, South Asia, and the Middle East and North Africa. So thank you so much, and look forward to questions. <laughs>